Major League Paintball is coming to Las Vegas for the first event of the 2024 season. At its heart, the game of paintball is simple. Shoot your opponents before you get shot, and then march down the field to victory. In the Major League Paintball Pro format, each team employs five players at a time, and they have a buzzer on their side to protect. Hit the opponent's buzzer, win the point. En route to the buzzer, both teams will be locked in gunfights, utilizing diverse strategies while moving up a field full of bunkers, fighting to get into critical positions. And these strategies could change given the score and the time left on the clock. There's 15 minutes in regulation. The highest point total wins the game. This is chess with guns, with no quarter given and no quarter requested. Welcome to Major League Paintball. The NXL World Cup, the biggest and most important event in the paintball world, and by far the hardest to win. 24 pro teams will take over the main stage and battle over four difficult days, but only one squad will earn the right to call themselves world champs. A win here, and your team becomes a legend forever. Through four events in 2022, only two teams have won a tournament. Leading the pack is San Diego Dynasty, who took the first two. After 20 years of precedent-setting greatness, they are still the best and most consistent team in the game. A win this weekend will make it four world championships in a row for the Dragon. But Tampa Bay Damage's tactical brilliance and Jacob Edwards' 101 ability has put them right on Dynasty's heels. Without a doubt, this veteran squad has the momentum after winning the last two in Philly and Chicago. These are the odds on favorites, but the field contains other squads who could see the view from the top of the podium. Former world champs Houston Heat and San Antonio X-Factors all-star rosters are dialed, and both teams have been to the finals this season. Impact, Infamous, AC Diesel, and Red Legion. All experienced crews who have redemption on their minds as this season has been filled with mostly frustration. New York Extreme and the New Orleans Hurricanes are both talented, up-and-coming dark horse squads whose skill and tenacity have teared up in 2022, and they both could go deep on Sunday. The Toulouse Tauntauns are looking to prove themselves stateside after winning the European Series, and they will be joined by rivals Stockholm Joy Division, Poland's Burst Factory, and the Lucky 15s from Great Britain. The stage is set for the most treacherous test of the year. New heroes could arise and favorites could fall, as the best paintball teams in the world throw down in Orlando, Florida to see who will reign as the NXL World Cup champion. Major League Paintball season finale, the World Cup, is by far the hardest test in the professional paintball world. The battles fought here by the 24 pro teams represent the absolute pinnacle of paintball performance. After three and a half days, it has come down to four teams. San Diego Dynasty, the most successful team ever to play the game. Baltimore Rebel, the underdogs searching for their first finals appearance. Edmonton Impact, the all-star team overdue for a win. And the Toulouse Tauntauns, the European champions. For the last few years, Dynasty has been on another tear, winning over half the events played since late 2020, including three World Cups in a row, and over 60 victories worldwide the past two decades. They sat in first place overall heading into this final event. They received a bye into the quarterfinals, where they beat Red Legion. No team is as successful and experienced as the boys in blue, with the hardened line of elite threats and veteran legends. Dynasty matched up in the semifinals against the Tauntauns. This incarnation of the Tauntauns, a team that's history spans three decades, has been impressive, dominating in Europe, winning three European championships in a row. They also received a bye into the quarterfinals where they eliminated Aftermath. The Tauntauns are hyper-aggressive, known for taking big risks. They have yet to win a big pro event in the United States. Edmonton Impact is a superstar team capable of winning any tournament. But after taking two in a row in 2022, they have not been able to notch up another victory this season. Impact had to fight through the prelims here at the World Cup, where they went undefeated and then had solid wins over Infamous and Heat on Sunday to earn their way into the semifinals. We had a ton of close matches. We got to play a bunch of teams that have beat us and kicked us out, and you know, we kicked them out on this one. So all of the teams showed up to World Cup really looking to play and win it. And so I'm super grateful to be playing for the Canadians. With their whole roster contributing, Impact was hungry to redeem this season as they headed into their battle against Baltimore Revo. Revo has been striving for a finals appearance their entire professional careers, building on a solid core roster and adding new recruits year after year. And they finally look dialed here at the World Cup. Obviously, everybody saw picking up Elliot is a game changer. Teams have slept on Elliot for years that I've seen, and he's just been on the wrong team. He's with us now, and he's got the support, and it shows how much of a difference Elliot is 
But again, the big thing for us was finally figuring out how to play as a team, communicate with each other, and work together. And I mean, we went out there and played for each other and came up with a big win against Damage. Revo was now battle-hardened after an upset last-second victory over favorites Tampa Bay Damage in the quarterfinals. Taking down a team who had just won two events in a row leading into the World Cup gave Revo the confidence needed as they headed into the semifinal battle versus Impact. Goal one's complete. Anything I can take out of that whole match, everybody saw. When we are down and it's hitting the fan, people run at us, we are f***ed. We need to go sit down and figure out the chaos, all right, when we quick low bodies. Granted, we started three on f***ing five. Either way, goal of that point, kill time. Whether you got burned off the break, we don't leave our spots. Came in and had a real strong start in the prelims. We've just built on, you know, every win and every victory, every point. Moving forward, the team's just gotten better 1% every time we're on the field. Keep evolving, all right? Yes, More in the tank, boys. Hey, hey, man. hey this is the match. Hey, hey, we take this match, we take the rest. Okay, this is the team that we have to dethrone oh, yeah. right yeah, here, right now. This is yeah. They're at home, yeah. all right? Jumping into point number one here. Both teams doubling up that back center here. It looks like a good old classic five on five break right now. Yeah, great comps here. Communication. That goes Zupa. Squads. Yeah, Zupa's yeah. gonna hit the deck and he's gonna call up. Gotta be careful though as Omara is looking this way. Pops the top, does he get the shot on Omara? He does. Beautiful one-handed snapshot here from Zupa to start opening this up as they already got the kill on Caleb Abel, so just three bodies left alive right now here for Revo. Oh, here goes a penalty on Revo. Yeah, that's that should do it here at this point. They might want to think about conceding it. And a penalty was for arguing, it sounds like. Revo the first to drop a body again. And now Impact have flipped down the field wholesale. And they're letting Impact get outside of the tips. Yeah. They're giving Impact an advantage because they're losing that first gunfight. Yeah. They're letting Impact be the ones to make the moves because they have low bodies and they're not making their shots playing some defense here. Yeah, we went up a couple points and we were kind of in the driver's seat and it's really hard to get through us whenever we lock up the field and we're playing zone paintball. That's kind of what's got us this far. That's how we've really planned on playing the field since day one. And those big moments, they don't look flashy, but that's what it takes to win tournament paintball here. We need guys to run into our guns and make mistakes and we got to make less mistakes than them. Well, Weaver's uh -oh. popping the top and he's thinking about making a move up. He's not feeling any pressure. That's gonna leave Caleb alive to clear the field here. And they're one point away from tying this game up. So jumping into this next one here is Revo needs something and they're gonna lose Caleb Abel again. Oh, no. And they might be losing a, oh, oh. They, not looking good, impact. Five on two. And they're gonna concede, smart concession here. So Revo, the Cinderella story on the line here as they took down the number one seed, Tampa Bay Damage but Edmonton Impact is handling them so far. It is close, but this is now the do or die moment for Revo. They have to score this next point. In the Revo game, you know, we had an issue where there was two penalties pulled at the same time, so the refs just kind of stopped the game. But, you know, they did what they, what I thought was the best is just like, hey, listen, everyone's dead. We'll move forward and call it a day. Argument for our side is we had more bodies, we thought. Their argument was who got the penalty first. Oh, and the crowd. Okay, so here we go. Moves, and Henry selling it to the crowd. As the crowd stoked that we're going to get back into this battle after a long review. Four guns up. Well, Revo does not produce a kill. Who is going to do it? Can Revo fight back? Here from the blue side of the field. Now Weaver's going to launch. Weaver's going to dunk on and just absolutely brutalize Matt Jackson and stay alive. 49 seconds left. Still has some work to do here. Just one player left alive with Zupi in the can, and they're going to do it, at least in this one. 35 seconds left to go here for Baltimore Revo with an effective push up the middle of the field, which is the way that that should have gone down. Baltimore Revo, can they summon the Spirit 2? Just 34 seconds left to go for Revo from the blue side of the field. Evans in impact, throws a little blow up the center, but Revo gets all the way into the 50-yard line. They got to go staggered attack, though. Going to have to launch. So long, 15 seconds. Here comes a push up the center from Weaver as Weaver is going to get one. He's, Weaver's going to get two. Weaver's going to load. 
the end there, Revo made a really great play to get a lot of players down the field and shoot a lot of our bodies out. I was still in the back center, shot one guy off the Dorito side, saw where my guy got shot and traded with the last one. Ex-teammate Rob Velez got a shot on my head. I got called clean, but either way, it was a trade. And so, you know, we walked away with the win there. There was some shenanigans in the middle, but you know, we really want to work through the hard times and uh, we welcome them, so we loved it. Edmonton Impact will be punching their ticket to the finals here. But yeah, it looks like a clean point. No flags in the air. We're here in the pits with them. Let's check it out. Yeah, so Impact ending the Cinderella story for Revo, but still what a great job. Top four. And big smiles here for Impact as uh, they are going to be in the finals, I believe, for the, yeah, the first yeah. time this season. They took a third at the first event. But They're playing this field real well. Team is feeling really good going into the finals. I think we have the perfect mix of a bunch of guys that have been here and a bunch of guys that are really hungry to win it. I think that we are doing all the right things, that things are going our way. It's really hard to win an event uh, in this day and age. All the teams are good, so respect to all the teams. Um, we're just doing all the right things right now, and we have to keep that up. On the other side of the bracket sat Dynasty and the Tauntauns. The Tauntauns had just beat Aftermath, who had been undefeated at this event and had come from behind victory. And Dynasty had just rolled through the Red Legion. With the long history between these two teams, this was one of the most anticipated games of the event. The Tauntauns definitely bring it like similar to the Russians. You know, they're very aggressive, like to gunfight wildly and control the spots and run. So, you know, discipline paintball and try to keep them guessing. So that's uh, Dynasty Sunday paintball, mistake free. About to have some escargot and some baguettes now. Yeah, so now we're going to see San Diego Dynasty and the Tauntauns and three World Cup victories in a row for Dynasty. Can they summon the spirit? Can the dragon do it again? Archie Montemayor going to make it out wide. He's been real, doing a real good job of taking ground and playing real smart, making a run, potential MVP. Here comes Ryan Greenspan, though, real quick here on the attack. The Dynasty cracks that 50-yard line. Look at Snake side. Ryan Greenspan, I love the fact that he made such an aggressive move. Counter-attack right now for the Tauntauns. Guns and runs through. Dice is up. Greenspan's back. And he stays alive. We talked about earlier, if you're going to put a guy all the way up there, you've got to protect him with somebody. Yeah. Because if they know he's there, they've got to come get him. Tauntauns look really good. Oh, five on two advantage over the Tauntauns. Tauntauns yeah. Tauntaun in complete control here. Coming up on uh, almost two minutes on this point, the last two players get peeled off because of the attack on the D side. So a nice finish for the Tauntauns from the Dorito side of the field and the crowd. Starting to starting to get some fans for the Tauntauns here. Press all the way around to the Dorito three and he makes it alive. I think he's the best at doing that. Runs and shoots the whole way there. And that's his read, right? Because if he sees the back center standing up and cut, he oh, jumps yeah. in. If the guy's not standing up, he knows where he got past the first gap here. And now he's up to the 50 Dorito. So he's looking snake side. They're going to be losing a body, though, for the Tauntauns. As Hugo, yeah, Hugo getting shot out. Hugo, Hugo had a real big game for him in the last one. They're going to be losing another one. It's all coming from that D side. Yeah, Archie right now past the 50 yard line here for Dynasty. Looking for Bax, he's going to see actually Axel's gun. Oh, and Axel gets the oh. shot in on Archie Montemayor. What a great job by Axel, but he's going to be losing his back center player. And so it's just Axel, and he gets diced up by Marcelo. So just combos all the way around. Great job by Chris Shear and Marcelo Morgat to finish that one off here for San Diego Dynasty. Arturo Andrade alive as well, too, and Archie pushing the issue on the snake side. Still just a, a, a beautiful job by Dynasty to tie this one up with 10.38 to go. On the breakout, Dynasty doubling up that set back center as the Tauntauns love to run. Looks like Hugo going to be taking the walk early for the Tauntauns and advantage Dynasty five on four. Axel filling out to the door to the snake here. Arturo comes up so Arturo can shoot that gap now. 
back center dies for Tonton now, so five on three in Dynasty's favor. In Dynasty, you know, you don't become the best team in the world without being able to smother teams in high body situations and not make mistakes. And that's what facing the Tontons. And the Tontons have fought through a lot of these. The reason they're even in the semifinals is because that's what they did against Aftermath. Yeah. They fought back oh. in low body moment. Man, this is a great little battle with Archie and Axel over here. Two of the best snake guys in the world. Oh, Archie oh but Archie. Long. Yeah, Archie's been doing that and, and, and very successfully, staying up and over that top and not feeling much pressure, but... Ryan's gonna catch. Uh, Axel hit. Oh, but yeah. Ryan Greenspan, the legend. In a lot of people's books, the GOAT ends up winning that gunfight against Axel Godin. I just don't think Axel knew that Ryan had got into that spot. Nope. Build across. Ryan catches him. Thought I saw something ring out when he came off the bunker. Another tactical refree for the Tauntauns on the D side. And here comes Ryan Greenspan. He's going to launch. He's already shot Axel. Let's see if he can put up a. Look, if he shoots another one, it'll be a three or two more. It'll be three pack to close. Oh, man, he's he almost caught. Oh, he shoots him in the back. So it's a two pack for Ryan Greenspan in a big moment here in a tie ball game with 7 17 to go. Three on one. Oh, but Ryan gets caught cross field. Still That's a good. great coast to coast shot from the Tauntauns. And I couldn't see Ryan get hit. I could just see his body language just slumping over. Like, oh, man. I, di I didn't see that he got hit either. I just saw him do this. Uh, eyes <laughs> in the sky, shoulders <laughs> slumped. So it doesn't matter, though, as uh, Dynasty is still going to get it done with Chris Shear, who's just been so consistent. If Dynasty wins this tournament and he keeps playing like that on the D side, he might be getting himself another MVP. lasers that they shoot off the break. Six minutes, a little under six to play. As Tauntauns are gonna be shooting Chris Shear off the break. So, wow, they're also gonna get a shot in on Ryan Greenspan. Five on three, Maddie. And that forces Marcelo Margot to dig out and dive out into D1, and he makes it clean. Stand. Axel catches Archie down the line there, great shot. Oh, Axel, a little two pack here for Axel Godin. And then Marcelo Margot's gonna get shot as well too. So it's possible here, tie ball game right now. Dynasty hasn't conceded. They're gonna let the time run down a little bit. Tauntauns, this isn't gonna give them a lead, so they also must be content with this as well too. Because yeah. they're not hitting the buzzer. Now well, what's happening is this is paintball chess. This is that mental chess match going on. So it looks like the concession. So I think that that's uh, Coach Brethauer for Dynasty just trying to give his starters another 20, 30 seconds of rest because he wants probably that same crew out there again. Throw to the snake off the break, and he makes it clean. That's a gutsy play call here from Coach Brethauer. Uh, we just had a really, really tough match against the Tauntauns. Tauntauns are playing lights out, man. Uh, I got down to overtime. You know, it was back and forth. They won the first one. We won the second two. They won the, the fourth one. They're tired, man. I know, but, but at the same time, they're still going to be tired. And they, and they still have to come at us. Let's let it. Let's just let it. Uh, we're in the pits right now, Tonton's is listening. Three minutes. Yeah, I, I can tell the time. <laughs> no! No! No, you need to get up there fast. We need to stop the bonsai. They're going to be in there. They're going to be up in the bonsai up in America. They got a chance, only down by one, jumping out back in this one after Dynasty and Tonton's with some time to talk about their game plan. Five on five break. Axel makes it into the snake for the Tauntauns. Axel now getting out of that 50. Grab him with pressure on Marcel in the back center. Axel's gonna pop the top as Arturo launches into guns. Just one body left alive. It's Chris Shear in D1 and then he gets torched and the crowd goes wild for the Tauntauns. They're gonna tie it up. Let's see if they, oh, they oh, they're gonna let the time expire. They, they wanna go right to overtime. They've been running the same starting five every single point, including the exhibition. So this is day five for them. And I think they determined before this time, hey, if we win this point, we wanna go to overtime. Don't give Dynasty a chance to shoot three of us on the break again. Wow, what a game. It's not over yet. And they're playing Dynasty in uh, overtime and Dynasty is real good at this. But this is uh, becoming a great story. Now we're over here in the pits with Dynasty. You could cut the tension with the knife right now. Yeah. Tied, heading into overtime. We're throwing five minutes on the clock. If we can't get a winner, we will go to one-on-ones. But the Tauntauns lose a body on the break, but so do San Diego Dynasty as they lose Arturo. So both teams risking it. Tauntauns also losing another body from the logistics can. And it's a four-on-three situation here in favor of Dynasty with Greenspan in a good spot. Looks like Axel's gonna launch and he's gonna get in the insert bunker here, snake side. There on your screen. 
Oh, and then did Ryan get the shot in on Axel? He did not, so Axel able to dip in there. Safe. Greenspan now pumping paint that lane, but that little diversion does allow Archie to get out wide. Again, with the one body advantage, and here comes Archie Montemiori. He's gonna crawl up and get into Snake 2 outside, and then Sheer launches to get into D2. So nice repositions. Marcella still holding it down at that can. He's going back and forth, trying to pump paint in front of Sheer. Marcella's gonna move up, and he's gonna get right behind Archie Montemiori. As we're down to now 214, Marcella hits the deck, crawls right in here with Archie, and he's going to continue to go forward. Now there's no excuse for one of those guys not to go trade out with Axel, right? Don't gunfight with him. Get your barrel two inches away from his chest and make sure you at least get him off the field. Yeah, perfect position here for Dynasty. They have a body to work with, and so Archie popping the top, really committing on that fight with Colombo as Marcelo is now hunting for Axel Goddamn, down to a minute and 42 seconds left to go. And here comes Marcelo Margot as he's going to crawl up. He's looking for it. Is he going to launch? He definitely is in position to shoot Axel if Axel decides to try to run down Archie. Oh, but then Axel stitches up Archie, then Marcelo shoots Axel got in, so it's just Marcelo Margot in the snake, and then Marcelo Margot is going to get but. the gunfight win on Colombo. Can Marcelo complete the three-pack? Looks like Chris Shear might have stolen that kill, but Marcelo Margot going to save the day here for San Diego Dynasty in overtime. Nice move, Marcelo. So Dynasty has a chance to win four World Cups in a row as they will be playing Edmonton Impact, but Marcelo Margot now making a strong case for potential MVP. If Marcelo Margot doesn't do that, we could be singing a different song here because uh, Axel made that a beautiful snapshot on Archie who had been spinning a bunch of time over the top, Know Thy Enemy, right? So Axel wins that gunfight, but then Marcelo comes up, gets that kill, gets the kill on Columbo, and then that allows Sheer to launch on that D side, perfectly executed by the legend Marcelo Margot. Wow, perfect great spot, job. Perfect time. On a juste et on les défense l'année prochaine. C'est compris pour tout le monde. La rage les gars, la rage Allez Pas la peine, la rage, la haine La haine Ok 1, 2, 3, pas Guys, no, it's 3, 3. Guys, one more game. It's bluegrass. Yeah, baby It's fucking bluegrass. It's 3.30. Okay, 3.30. And we're in the same pit. Grass is blue. Grass is blue. Grass is blue. This is our home. Alright. It's our home. It's our stadium. Individualize it. Yep. Hey, see it before you do it. Go out there and do it. Hell yeah. Team! D-Y-N-A-S team! So, in that second match, it was, uh, was a really tough fight against the Tauntauns. They were playing really good. Uh, I'm really, you know, uh, proud of them, honestly. Uh, but it is our day, you know. It's Dynasty Day. This is Florida, and this is where we win. What's up, everybody? Ryan Greenspan from San Diego Dynasty out here at the World Cup. Uh, we're in the finals, us and Impact. Uh, we just had a really, really tough match against the Tauntauns. Really tough matches out here, man. It's really hard to get the information. So we're gonna really focus on that and our shooting off the brakes will be good until these guys. All right, see you guys in the finals. You know, Archie's playing great. Marcel's playing great. Chris Shear's got some good points. And, you know, Arturo's playing great. But, you know, man, Ryan is, Ryan's the GOAT. You know, that's my opinion on that. You know, I think he's the greatest that's ever played just because of, of how long he's been playing at the top level and still doing it, right? I mean, the guy is, you know, the greatest paintball player that's been my opinion in, in our generation. So, you know, they're all playing well. And, and, you know, we have guys that are great, you know, playing great. You know, Zoop has had a phenomenal tournament for us. Tyler, our new kid that we picked up, you know, he was hurt half the year, three quarters of the year, and then this is his first event he actually played, and he's playing great, and he's on the starting line. So it's just gonna be, you know, a battle of who's gonna try that first move. That's a huge event on this field. But I think it's just confidence, right? You know what I mean? You don't, you can't second guess yourself, especially on these fields that we're playing, especially against opponents that we're playing. So, and honestly, you know, we're due. We're due for a good event. We're due for a win. And you know, we put our position, or put ourselves in a position that we have a chance, right? We're playing against a great team, Dynasty. But you know, let's just see who's uh, who's better this last, you know, 45 minutes of paintball. Coming into the event, you know, we had two first place finishes in the beginning of the year. And then we got two third place finishes. Damage took both of those events. I think the team recognized that our floor was, was actually set pretty high, but we needed to just continue to work hard and you know, kind of dissect what was happening to us in those late rounds on Sunday. It's usually small details, and the guys have been working hard, working together, and we figured some things out. You know, now we're here at World Cup again. Um, you, know, you try not to put too much pressure on because you just want to play your game. 
We've been here many times. We were here last year, and uh, you know, it's be great to have a, a fourth World Cup in a row. A serious game of chess, and I'm really, really looking forward to the way that it shakes out. Here we go. Come on, boys! Close your eyes. Find that little kid. There he is. Find him in there. <laughs> How much fun is he having? Woo! <laughs> Too much fun. Let him live. Let him live. Let that kid live. Let him live. Huh? I feel those ghosts, man. They're back. Boys. Let's go. Those ghosts are back. Let's go. They're gonna live here forever. Team on three. One, two, three. Team! Let's go! Let's go. Ah! Hey, let's go. Our work begins now. Our work begins now. Hey. I mean this is a big this is a big thing right now. Nice is about to win four World Cups in a row. A fucking good team. Probably the best team I've ever seen of Dynasty. So good, I don't even have to be there. On the field, you know. And it makes me really proud. These guys are um, just incredible athletes, incredible teammates, incredible friends. And, um, you know, they just keep, keep making history. <laughs> it's amazing. It's really amazing. And, um, yeah, there's just no doubt it's gonna happen right now. It, it means a lot to me as a person, as a player, as a fan, to be uh, on this team, even if I don't play. I love it. We are back for the biggest battle of the year, the 2023 NXO World Cup Final going down right now. It's Edmonton Impact taking on San Diego Dynasty. Impact fought through the wild card round. They took down Infamous. They defeated Houston Heat. They beat the Cinderella Story, Baltimore Rebel, to make it to this final match to play the best team in the game. San Diego Dynasty, they got the buy into the top four, had a little bit of struggles during those championship seeding matches, but they took down Legion, they took down the Tauntauns, and here they are matching up, trying to win their fourth World Cup victory in a row. Marcelo Morgat went off in the overtime match, getting a two-pack, maybe winning $5,000 courtesy of Pate Smith Law. Maybe we will see, because this is going to be absolutely nasty out here. So Marcelo Morgat, he had a big one. Archie Montemayor, he was going off on the snake side to get him here. For Edmonton Impact, JC, he's been phenomenal in the snake form as well, too. Matt Jackson so consistent up that center. These teams chock full of stars. I'm Matty Marshall here on Go Sports, and I am blessed to have Mike Jeffrey, the coach of that Cinderella story that just got stopped by Impact. Mike Jeffrey to help us call this set, as well as paintball legend Rich Telford. Mike, we'll start with you. Edmonton Impact, what are they doing perfectly right now. Really dynamic center presence with Matt Derula shooting from the three, the back center, off the break and coming quick up the center. Uh, Zupa on the snake side playing really consistent ball. They're playing conservative but strong up the center, which on this field has been the difference between winning and losing, if you ask me, with these wide spots hard to make. Yeah, you know, so for the event, JC up the snake a lot. Zupa kind of getting the start here today, and I know that's uh, somebody that you, everybody likes is Zupa's, you know, he won the MVP for him during one of their wins in California a year ago. And, but it's Edmonton Impact, man. They're getting lots of contributions. I'm wondering who they're going to start on that D side. Is it going to be Dalton? Is it going to be Tyler Penelio? Uh, looks like Tyler. Yeah, it looks like Tyler. So a lot of faith in him. And then up the gut, Reeser, Darula, Matt Jackson. Uh, and then on the flip side, Dynasty is just going to be running Chris Shear, Ryan Greenspan, Marcelo Margot. And it looks like Arturo is going to get the start along with Archie Montemayor. And we're into point number one here in the most important game of 2023. Man, Ryan got a good start there. He was a half a step ahead of everybody. Five on five here as Impact flies at the center of the field with Trevor Reeser. Yeah, Reeser. On the real side. Yeah, Chris Reeser getting up into that wedge and going back and forth real quick. But uh, boys, five on good old classic five on five break to start at this final match. Tough to get out here, but they all stay in pocket, but with strong center presences as Matt Jackson gets into the snake side, lay down brick, That's which is big with right. Trevor Reeser. They have a nice cross there. Matt Derula also getting into the action, so impact immediately with a strong center presence. No one out wide yet. 
Yeah, and, and no surprise that they're going up that gut. You know, Mike, break that down. As the coach of Revel, I mean, it does look like the safest place to attack has been blatantly obvious. It's the center. Yes, exactly. Those spots are the ones with secondaries that are clean and not too risky. It's hard to get out wide on this field. Trevor Reeser, it's cool to see him getting a start in the finals for Impact. He's rode the bench a lot for them, but they kill one off the snake side. Impact does for a five on four situation. I believe that was probably Trevor shooting him from the inside on that center wedge. Well, it looked like, yeah, caught Archie. Yeah, so Archie Mon Montemayor taking the walk and Dynasty, a little bit of a deficit here down to four bodies and tucked in that pocket. Pocket. As Arturo Andrade, Rich Arturo earning the start here. He's uh, been relatively consistent, consistent enough. But it's been so tough. Rich, talk to me about that Landry logistics, that white tower. So hard to live there, but so crucial. Yeah, it's a crucial, crucial control bunker. You can lock down the snake side. It just becomes very vulnerable when the guy moves up that D side to that D side 50. Right now, Impact has the Landry log logistics bunker and the center wedge, which makes it almost impossible for Dynasty to get out wide on the snake side. They also have the snake side uh, lay down on the inside, which makes it hard for them on the Dorito side. So Impact has almost full control of the field and five bodies alive. Look for Impact to kind of milk this point here and wait for Dynasty to make a mistake. Yeah, eventually they'll try to get outside from the cans to the snake side and the D side as well. Certainly. Yeah, Impact's in uh, pretty solid control right now, even only up a body just because they have that uh, that forward progression in the middle and they're just locking all these zones down. So Dynasty going to try to have to find, you can see there all the angles that these players are shooting right now here. And but this is that complex chess match that happens when you are playing the game of paintball. So Ryan Greenspan kind of has the ball here because he has the ability to go up the center for Dynasty. They're already four on five. Oh, but Trevor dies, so it's four on four. That changes everything. Now the teams are basically even up. Ryan goes up the Who center. got that kill? Ar Arturo. Arturo wrapped yeah, around. Yeah, Arturo got wrapping around. Very man. sneaky. He dropped low, wrapped around, and got that kill, man. Yeah, creative kill. Is he wasn't feeling a, a, that much pressure, so he was a wrap around and even up the body count. So now four on four, but a little bit slightly better field position right now for Ryan Greenspan as he has moved up into the wedge. Dynasty gets Chris Shear out into that Dorito corner. Also, Ryan Greenspan gets into the snake side 50 wedge. Edge. So Dynasty with better field position now with Impact still trapped in the center. Yeah, referee thought about going to check out Shear, but just caught him from a distance. Looked like he's good to go. So Greenspan is up and over the top of that spot. He can Arturo, go through. Yeah, he Arturo, if he's thinking about it. Arturo's going to join him, get a little bit closer. Marcelo Margot feeling no pressure in that back center. He's got his gun up, and here comes Ryan Greenspan is hunting for it. He's not shooting his gun. Matt Jackson is looking towards that D side, but so is Ryan Greenspan. Greenspan got to be careful. He can't shoot his gun. But look at this, though. Zupa must have saw it. So Zupa's going to come through. He's going to get the drop in on, uh, and, then, and then Ryan gets cut in half. But all that chaos, Arturo gets out to the snake, and Marcelo dips out to the can. But nice kill here for Impact. Still four bodies live for them, four versus three. Yeah, I think Ryan was being a little too sneaky there. I I think he should have just committed, at least got that one elimination. If he gets more, he gets more. But if not, you know, you get shot there and you lose that body advantage and all that real estate. Four on three advantage now for impact as they spread the field from Dorito 2 to Snake 2. Well, they definitely made uh, Ryan Pace, who's going to have a lot of cleanup to do here in the pits. As now Zupa is going to be crawling in here into Snake 2. He's looking inside, as uh, but there's no one to shoot at, essentially. Well, cross field into, for Chris Shear. Arturo's going to try to match it. He's going to go into the Snake. Dynasty's still down a body as we've eaten up almost five minutes on this clock. Impact also getting into Dorito 2. Yeah, Tyler Penelio getting into Dorito 2. And here comes a big dip across and it looks like they're going to get the kill there on Arturo and Edmonton Impact looking pretty good to put this first point on the board unless Marcelo Margot can pull off some heroics from this back corner or, or Chris Shear can step up. They do have a cross field spread outside wide. Yeah, Marcelo looking down trying to catch Zupa here Rich. Tough spread to pull off a four and two here Matty with Impact spreading the field. We see a lot of low body situations but that when the guy, that's when the guys are trapped in the pocket. Penelio's looking for it. He's past the 50 yard line. He's wrapping around, but he gets caught cross field by Marcelo. Went to sleep. I don't know if you knew Marcelo had made that bump out. Three on two situation now here in favor of Edmonton Impact as Zupa hits the deck and he's going to crawl up slightly past the 50 yard line inside on the snake. Marcelo's taking a look at the referees, trying to see if he can read the referees to find out where he thinks the guy is in the snake. It gets tough on the blue side of the field this <clears> time of day with the sun coming down in your eyes. So Marcelo coming up over the top, reading shadows. Oh, That's Marcelo getting caught though, trying to get back to the can as Zupa picks him up. And now it's a one on three here in favor of impact. It's just Chris Shear and it's not looking good for Chris. Chris dives out into D1 and then here comes Darula. He's gonna go outside wide. It's not gonna matter as they clip him out in the first point. 
after about five and a half minutes is going to go to Edmonton Impact. So they haven't won a tournament all year. Dynasty won the first two, damaged the next two. Dynasty going to be the series title holders, but it would be massive for Impact to finally put a win on the board here at the World Cup and win this tournament yet again, a tournament they have won multiple times. We're in the pits right now with Impact. Let's check it out. Hey, get a water. Hey, hey, do we want to stretch teeth? Eight nine. Huh? You want to stretch teeth? Eight nine pie. 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 Eight nine Hey, Zupa's on a read. Everyone else the same, yeah? <laughs> Let's check out these replays here. Calm and composed in the pits, as always, for the most part. So there's Greenspan. He waited. He bided his time, but he did get caught before he launched and then gets just chainsawed in half and paying the toll on the walk-off. And then here's that close with Chris Shear in the back corner bunker. Not much that Chris could do in that situation. We have seen a lot of low-body ma magic pulled off, but just too much just overwhelming boa constrictor-esque pressure here put by impact those and then you see that uh zupa pulling off that kill on marcelo as he tried that desperation run back to the can now we're in the pits with dynasty as they are sending their starting five out and it's probably going to be a steady dose of these same five margot and arturo marta mayor greenspan and sheer What's it, Rich, you know, you coach in New York Extreme, done such a good job with that crew. What, what adjustments does Dynasty need to make right now? The first adjustment I would make would be taking Ryan Greenspan off the offense and putting him on the defense. Mm. Like, if I do want someone to go through and do exactly what Ryan's doing, I just don't want it to be Ryan. I want it to be, I don't think they're not going to take the best clothes in the business and have him go offense early and get shot out early. So that's, that's the number one thing I would change. Mike, what do you think? Yeah, I agree with that. I think you want Arturo doing that. I think you also want to have a strong center presence. They kill one out of the Landry Logistics bunker and also get to the center wedge. That's huge for Dynasty, yeah. five on four. It's a big kill too, because Jackson is very, very, uh, he's very composed. He closes out a lot of points. He plays offense and defense, but it does look like we losing a body here for Dynasty as well too. Looks like four on four here, Matty. Four on four. Who dropped for Dynasty then? I don't know, but Ryan coming through to the impact center wedge. Very early on, he's going to catch Darula here. Ooh. Or did Darula catch him? Oh, Looks like traded. they traded. Yeah, they traded. So a little trade here is, and Ryan is going for it. But I don't want Ryan dead right now, right? I want anybody else that's talented on Dynasty to do that. I want Dynasty, uh, Ryan to be back here with Marcelo and Archie, basically. Well, I mean, they still have sheer Marcelo and Archie in the backfield, so that's pretty solid. Three on two situation here in favor of Dynasty. Yeah, it's already down to three on two. Wow. Yeah, we're, we're missing bodies because they're sneaking off. Two on three advantage here for Dynasty. Dynasty not sure what the count is. As soon as they figure it out, they're going to switch the offense, get outside on both of these tapes. And they almost killed Trevor Reeser out the back center for impact, but they don't. Marcel, Mar Marcel they're going to move up into that lay down door. And would look for Shear to try to make a move out or Ar Archie to make a move out. Shear on the D side, Archie on the snake side. Marcelo's looking for, he's popping the top, and they're going to get a kill on that back center as well, too. That might have been Archie or Marcelo. Shear's going to dip out, but here comes the last body for impacts. So they get into D2. Yeah, three on one advantage for Dynasty. Marcelo has eyes on him, too, so he won't be able to streak down and catch them sleeping. Although it looks like Dynasty doesn't know the count. I think it was a bloodbath off the break, and neither team really recognized it. Yeah, Arturo's got the ball right now. Archie's got the ball right now. He can release and go right through the middle. In a finals match like this, you can tell both teams know that there are going to be long points here. So now with Dynasty, knowing they have an up-body advantage point, they want to make sure they close it clean. They're willing to do it slowly to tie it up at one. Yeah, Marcelo Margot here and Archie and Chris Shear all zoning up at the 50-yard line, being safe. And then they're going to get that kill on Tyler. Tyler thought for a second he might have traded with Marcelo. I think Marcelo got that killer on Tyler Panelio. So Dynasty answers with 7.12 to go here. Probably going to be around 7.05 by the time they walk in. But it has been a steady dose of these five players. So definitely going to maybe pause for a second, get a breath before they hit that buzzer. And a signature dragon two kills off the break right there yeah. in Sunday finals. That's yeah. what Dynasty does great. I get one of, yeah, so Mike, you're one of the better analysts out here doing a great job with Rebel. You guys just went deep. 
Um, but yeah, that's one of the things about Dynasty. Break that down. What's the, what, explain that to me. So at this point in the tournament, almost no one's running wide. You won't see barely anybody running out to the Dorito corner or the snake off the break or even that insert bunker on the snake side. So being able to shoot those short shots for those two cans on the Dorito side and snake side, it's your first ball pulling up off the box being able to connect on those shots and have your paint cool enough to break in this humidity. Yeah. And they have also probably one of the best pit crews in the game, so. We're in the big pits. Part. In the Makes pits a huge right. difference. Yeah, in the pits right now with Dynasty. Let's listen in. And notice them pulling paint out of that cooler. Well, that's where it's supposed to be. <laughs> 100%, Mike. Yeah, try to take a closer and get up Seven? Yes, sir. Very calm. How much time? How much time? It's not their first rodeo. No, it's not. Yeah, Dynasty trying to win four World Cups in a row here. And uh, Emmett Tinnipak, they have won this tournament before. But it has been a bit of a dry year for, for Emmett and Impact. Fresh line day, for Impact. Yeah, Impact sending out JC. Again, JC's had some real good points on this. Uh, they've been going more Zupa, but he had some stellar uh, moments out there. They're sending Cornell, Dalton. Yeah, this is a complete Laval. fresh line. Laval, Zach Yakimek here in a tie ball game. Impact with their deep bench and their trust in their bench makes them a unique pro team out here. A lot of teams end up with their five deep in the tournament. Impact willing to go with a completely fresh line. Also, though, allowing game. that first line to rest, right? Yeah. Assuming that they're going to, they think that they're confident that they can win this point even with the second line. Now, if they can go back with a one point lead and have their best guys fully rested and ready to go in, that's a big advantage, man. Totally. That's why Bart spends all that money. We'll see if it works out for him here. Dynasty running with that starting five until the wheels fall off, it looks like. It's a little bit under seven on the clock and on the breakout, who's gonna take the advantage? It looks like San Diego Dynasty. Are they gonna be losing the back corner bumper on the D side? The ref's checking him out. Looks like he's good to go. I saw the same thing, Mike. Five on five. But it's not whether we see it or not, it's whether the referees see it. And then Akshir goes right into D2. Maybe he had something to get rid of on the <laughs> move forward. Maybe he figured, hey, if I've already had one life, why not risk it? Impact, though, getting up the center with Zakamak and Laval. Same breakout every time, different draw. bodies, right? But same exact spots. Sheer probing, though. Not sure that Yakimek can see him and make the move forward. He no. doesn't see it. Chris now, dips into the 50-yard line on the D side. That's undaunted. where he needs to get to get the kills, right? Yeah. Now, the first guy that's vulnerable is this brick over here. I don't think the... Impact knows that Sheer is in that uh, They're Dorito about side 50, and he kills Nick Laval. And he kills Zach Yakimek, Chris Shear, doing damage on the 50 Dorito side. No yeah. idea he's there yet. Little two pack of kills here for Chris Shear, and have they picked him up? Because I don't see. Okay, now Cornell is going to switch his gun. They're probably wondering where do those kills come off? Because they don't know. Yeah, and then Chris Shear, I think, just feasted on that back center as well too. Look for the horn before too long from Impact in a long point match with Dynasty with five alive and the 50 Dorito now getting into the snake with Archie. Yeah, if I'm Dave Baines, I'm on the horn right here. Yeah, five on two concede. Yeah, it's five on two, five twenty left. Concede, concede, concede. And it's a cold line. These guys have not played yet, and they're getting blown off the field by Chris Shear. Yeah, now you got to come back and win two points, right? So you want as much time as possible to do that. They kill oh, Archie. Archie. Yeah, Archie's going to get How that kill. Gonna... And then Archie's going to get the two-pack to close, combining with Arturo Andrade. Shear might have put some balls on him, too. So I think that was a three-pack there for Chris Shear to open the door for San Diego Dynasty. And then Archie and Arturo close it with just about five minutes left to go here. Two to one going to be the score. The Dragon takes the lead. Great play call by SK there to risk the Dorito corner there with Shear. He makes it. Rich and I saw a pink explosion. Maybe it was off the bunker. Maybe something disappeared. But Chris Shear gets down the field undetected, kills at least two impact bodies. All the guns shift that way. Dynasty follows up because they play great team ball. Dominant point by Dynasty there. Well, we've seen this a lot this weekend because of this pink paint. You see the explosion, but a lot of times when a guy's on the move and he's on the dive, it just comes off, and you may see it, but it doesn't actually leave anything. So let's get a look here as Chris Shear making his way out to, yeah, right there. That's what you guys saw, right off his what? path. What? That's crazy. But it looks like most of the paint Left. It was a ghost ball. That's what I'm saying. It do, that, do we keep seeing this because of the pink paint? But, I mean, the referee goes right in. He saw it. He goes in and checks, but there's nothing there. 
Word on the street has it that the blue side refs are more lenient than the red sides. I'm not biased, though. <laughs> I was going to say, you can give us all the secrets now that you guys got knocked out, Mike. <laughs> yeah, again, I got Rich Telford up here, paintball legend, coach of New York Extreme, and former excessive star and our captain back in the day, world champ, and then Mike Jeffrey, who just helped lead as a rookie coach, Revo, into top four. Mike, congratulations. You guys look really good. Well, we don't like the congratulations because we had our sights set on one or nothing, but... Um... Well, I respect that, yeah, but well, also reality is top four is pretty good for you yeah, know the fact yeah. that you guys two Sundays in a row, terrible start to the year, things are going the right way. Yeah, great yeah. job. Three Sundays in a row, you know, taking steps forward, that's what it's all about out here in yeah. sports. That's all you're looking for is improvement, right? Yeah. You know if you constantly improve, eventually you're going to be where you need to be. So much of paintball, too, is the buy-in on the team. Dynasty always has the strongest buy-in because they have a winning program. Impact strong buy-in with a winning program. Well, impact would be great for them that if they could if they got some work to do here as there's not a lot of time left. Just five minutes on the clock. May, might see maybe two, maybe three points, maybe one. Who knows? As they're going to be losing a body here. Impact taking one. Ooh, Archie with a little bit of a, and he's going to, Archie going to get shot too. So four on four situation here. Actually three on four in favor of Dynasty as Reeser takes the walk. Matt Jackson's still alive though, and he's going to eat up Arturo. So yeah, three. three on three, back and forth battle here on the kills. And slightly better field position here uh, for impact because of Matt Jackson's position. Yes, and this is, again, when you want Ryan Greenspan to be alive, right? When it gets down to a three-on-three, three, you don't want to have, have gone up and traded out with the body. Ryan is in a great spot here where he's in that center tower. He can attack the center if he wants it. He can also get wide on the Dorito side. He's only got, well, he's got two guns now on him. Now just one. This could become the point for impact. Four, uh, ten on the clock, a three on three, down one. Ryan Greenspan is hunting for it. He's up at the wedge. He's not feeling any pressure. And Matt Jackson's also looking for it, too. He's posted on Matt. Matt's getting shot up by Marcelo. Marcelo, the big turd in the backfield. Marcelo only goes in when you put pressure on him. He's just been in that back, his eyes over the top, just rolling his gun. He does a really good job of that, man. Yeah, he's barely ever died oh, back Ryan. there. Oh, Tough Ryan guy. does get shot. Who shot Ryan? Was it I Matt? think it was Matt Derula. Matt Derula, yeah. looking inside. So now a three on two situation in favor of impact. They need it. 3.30 to go. Going to have to find a way to get up this field and go into this what is going to be a cross in a second as Chris Shear going to dive into, into D2. D3 and now, And goes right into D3. Marcelo's going to follow him up. They're just going to try to blow up in that D side. There's no one in front of him over there. Chris goes into the 50. And with the lead, this is actually really smart because now Impact has to deal with what's in front of him. What's in front of him is a threat. The threat is Chris Shear, Marcelo behind him, and all the guns start shifting towards Chris. Well, it's really hard to get out this side with those guys penetrating on the D side. Matt Derula has the ball now. It's just Marcelo in the Dorito 2 and Chris Shear on the 50 Dorito side for Dynasty. Derula has no... Um, Nobody's opposition in him. front of him. They're just trying to figure out the situation because with a three on two right here, you cannot squander this. It's a, almost a must have point for impact right here oh, with a body. And, and the longer this goes, the more important it becomes for impact because there's a coming up on 230. If they don't win this one and Dynasty does and they click another minute off the clock, they're going to be down by two with just a minute 30 left. That's going to be bad. <laughs> Marcelo is setting traps over here. He's at the Dorito corner inside and he wants to catch an impact player being undisciplined on the outside. Matt Rula goes out to the corner. And Marcelo gets the shot in on Matt Rula and then Marcelo trying to eat up Matt Jackson on the attack. And then Matt's going to put some pressure here on Marcelo and here comes Matt Jackson and Matt Jackson going to, looks like he gets the kill. He gets Chris Shear. And on, on Chris Shear, two on one situation. Marcelo going to come over and try to trade out with Matt Jackson, but Matt Jackson saves this point here with a two pack of kills and he's gonna walk in to hit that buzzer. Buzzy Jackson, legend out of Texas, came up with the AC Dallas camp and then decided to come over to Edmonton Impact and he's just been a star for them ever since. That was so huge for Matt Jackson. Marcelo set the trap, Darula walked into it, but as Marcelo is almost celebrating the kill on that far snake's night and evening the body count, Jackson comes through the center for impact, picks up Shear on his side of the field. The field of vision there in a high stress moment, that's top level play. A lot of guys get tunnel vision, not Jackson. Matt Jackson playing every single point pretty much this weekend. We got a carbon golden barrel to give here for the MVP. And before uh, he's he making an that, argument for that. He did all that in the middle, he shot Ryan Greenspan, right? Yeah. 
So a three pack, essentially, yeah, a, a to close. Shot Down by one against the best team in the world with barely any time on the clock. I mean, if good. they win, maybe finals MVP, we'll see what happens in these next couple points. But he has been playing every, point. every single point. Yeah. It's going and uh, and up the pod, middle. Shooting at all, all yeah. 10 pods every point. And, you know, Zupa's had some good ones, and there's been a lot of other personal performances, but he's pretty much been a rock for him. So I wonder if I can propose a Rich Telford versus Matty Marshall breakout here. 2-2, two, two, 150 on the clock. Matty, you're coaching Dynasty. Rich, you're coaching Impact. What's your play call? I'm going to send on Dynasty? Yeah. I'm going to... Chris Shear's been unstoppable on that D side. I'm gonna launch Chris on that on that D side. I'm, I'm gonna going put my it. extra gun D side, and I'm gonna do the exact same breakout. Wait, no, you, you, you <laughs> imagine I didn't say that. Just really totally pretend I didn't say that. That's not even fair. I shouldn't have gone first. Well, you're really really pretty. <laughs> that's that's a lie. You have a great voice. <laughs> I yeah, looked so. at Maddie first. He had a disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Chris Shear's been. He's made it. Look, it's percentages, right? And they started trying that early in the championship round when they were doing it for seeding to see how many times he would make it. And he was kind of unstoppable over there. And I don't think that Impact would expect him to do it in, in, a, in a moment, of, in magnitude, a magnitude moment of like this. So all tied two to two. Overtime, baby. Possible, minute and 50 on the clock. I, I think we're gonna see a point scored in a minute 50. We could see an overtime though, because these, these guys are risking it. I, I thought this would be a little bit more of a conservative game. I mean, it's only two, two, but all oh, looks like Impact is gonna be dropping a body on the break and so it's a four on four, four on five situation here in favor of Dynasty, and Dynasty does send Shear out wide. And that was Darula taking the walk, I think. Yeah, Darula, yeah, Darula. out of the back center. They did make it out to the Dorito corner impact. Five on four advantage here for Dynasty. <clears throat> Less than 130. If Dynasty wins, because Marcelo had that big move in the in the overtime point to get him here, I think you gotta give it to Marcelo. Yeah. Great move by or, or Matt sheer. Jackson Fuzzy to get up into that snake side lay down because Dynasty had the snake move all day there. Yep. Not trying to make the mistake right here. Especially down the body, right? Got to get that gap. Someone's got to get on that gap. Everyone just heard the 60 seconds. Dynasty is angling for it. Archie comes into the snake side insert. Yeah, and again, there's $5,000 at stake for a move of the tournament, courtesy of Chris, uh, sorry, of uh, Pate Smith Law. Chris Shear dying there. Yeah, Chris Shear is going to die. So big moment right now, four on four situation. And another body coming off right now for impact is Archie is going to, uh, Archie might have caught, well, no, Archie's good to go. They lose Arturo. It's getting crazy. All right, 32 seconds left to go as Marcelo has to dig back. And here comes impact as they're pushing forward. And they're getting chewed up, though. And it's Marcelo Morgat as the last body left alive. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation, but they don't know it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Oh! Oh, and Marcelo Margot laces the shot in, and Marcelo Margot going to be the hero yet again. He did that for you, Matt, so the decision would not be hard for you. Unbelievable job by Marcelo Margot. That forces the concession. He's out there skipping right now. Got himself about a three-pack in the biggest moment you possibly could imagine. It's the World Cup. It's tied 2-2. Two two. Impacts on the close. Your bodies are dropping. Your teammates are dying around you. Marcelo Margot, undaunted, stayed focused, kill after kill after kill. Right. Go ahead, sorry. I hate to do this, but Tyler on the Dorito side for impact thought it was kill five, and he yeah, was strutting up the field. field. Marcelo, the seasoned vet, picks it up. It's a free kill in the one-on-one. -on -one. Rookie mistake. Ryan Greenspan looks up here, looks at, look, basically looked at your face and said, I just lost $5,000. <laughs> Marcelo Margot doing it again. Jesus, he's so good. You know, it was... You know, we did some uh, some pieces for Dynasty and a lot of, well, for, for Marcelo, a lot of the top players out there, just players to watch. And, you know, with Dynasty, when you look at that crew and how good they've been the past few seasons, Marcelo never comes off the field. And Skinny is a, a very intelligent coach, one of the smartest ever to do it. And he does that for a reason. He, Marcelo almost never makes mistakes. He plays a very difficult position. He can play offense when his front guys die in front of him. And then he has moments like this on a regular basis. So, you know, and... I mean, even though Ryan in the past two and a half years has also been one of their main killers for him, let's get a look at this replay. As you see, he dips back with a nice tactical retreat at the perfect moment to get himself in a better position. And they didn't know he was there. They thought he was at the Landry Logistics spot. So he gets a kill there, gets another kill, and he's scanning down here, and then Tyler thinks it's kill five, and then he just gets absolutely owned. Rookie mistake. Welcome to the league, kid. Marcelo Margot, <laughs> gun to the sky in celebration to win the fourth World Cup in a row here for 
Senego Dynasty. Now, 16 seconds left. We have seen a seven second point and an eight second point the past couple years. So it is possible. This tournament is not over yet. Shades it of Kyle Spicka on that Marcelo retreat right there from that uh, Dynasty infamous World Cup final years ago. Yeah, that was uh, absolutely going down in the history books. There's 16 seconds. Can Edmonton Impact do it? We will see. Possible, not probable. Lost two. Lost three. Lost three. They got nine seconds. They get through, and here comes Justin Cornell. Justin Cornell untouched all the way in the snake side. He finally gets taken out. And time's going to expire. San Diego Dynasty exploding in celebration here and big hugs in that back center as, Ar as uh, Archie embraces Marcelo. But, I mean, it's, this is a no-brainer. This is probably the easiest one I've had to call. It's got to be Marcelo Margot who's going to be getting that Golden Barrel MVP performance from uh, courtesy of Carbon Paintball. Yeah, I got Josh Turbin up here. Big shout out to all the boys from Carbon and what they've been doing for uh, for the for the sport by providing providing this Carbon Barrel. This is going to go to Marcelo Morgat. Check out their team program. Go to carbonpaintball.com. It's a mix and match thing. Don't have to go head to toe, but yeah, look at this though. Unbelievable performance. Hoist that man up. Let's get Marcelo Margot lifted up as he saved the day. Not only did he save the day in the semifinals in the overtime point, but he just won him the tournament by being the brick wall back there, just chalking up kill after kill after kill. Incredible job there by Marcelo Margot. Dynasty, four World Cup victories in a row. Rich, what are your final thoughts here? I think uh, this was an amazing year. Thank you for sharing with me. I really enjoyed watching all the paintball. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, New York Extreme not able to make it on into uh, Sunday's competition here. But every other Sunday, it's we'll going to be, be a strong 2024 yeah, we'll for New York Extreme. You guys are doing a good job there. And Revo making it into top four here. Mike Jeffrey, uh, amazing job here with the boys. And they got to be, again, frustrated, but pretty stoked overall three Sundays in a row. Yeah, yeah great job with the programs. Stuff. And there is the man of the moment. Marcelo Margot getting himself, yet again, some more hardware. Uh, check out the Play the Game podcast, and he's going to get embraced by his boy, Ryan Greenspan, as they're going to win that, I believe, $40,000 and four World Cups in a row. God, the Dragon, they still got it. Best team of the year. They win the World Cup. They win the series title. And that is going to do it here from Kissimmee, Florida. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Season is over. Can't wait for 2024. We'll keep you guys updated in the offseason. Got tons of content coming your way as it will all kick off in Vegas in early March. But that is it. The tale is over. The story's in the books. And history has been made. Four World Cups in a row. Thank you guys for tuning in. It's been an amazing five days here at the World Cup. And I'll see you guys next year.